Hello, welcome children and families to the Deanery Church of England Primary School's virtual Easter service. This is the day the Lord has made. We might not be able to physically come together as a community this Easter, but we can certainly join together in faith as a Deanery family. We will now sing our first song. Sunday. Jesus was walking to a big city called Jerusalem. He told two of his friends, please go into that village over there. You will see a young donkey tied up by a gate. Untie it and bring it to me. But what if someone asks what we're doing, they asked. Just tell them that I need to borrow their donkey, Jesus said. So the men went to find it. They put coats over the donkey's back to make it more comfortable for Jesus to sit on. Jesus rode the donkey into Jerusalem. People cheered and laid their coats on the ground to make a carpet. They cut branches from the palm trees at the side of the road and waved them in the air as the procession passed. Hooray for Jesus, everyone shouted. Hooray for the special King God promised to send us. Let us pray. Dear God, how often would I wish to stretch across the miles and touch loved ones far away, or be whisked on angels' wings to their very side. Be with them in all that they do, and when their hearts are growing lonely and homesick, and when they long to see and hold their loved ones, touch them, Lord, with the touch of your presence. Hold them in your embrace. Help them to feel better, knowing that in your love, we are all close together. Jesus washes the disciples' feet. It was the day of the festival when God's people remembered how he had rescued them from Egypt long ago. Where shall we have our special meal? asked the 12 friends, and Jesus told them the place. Before they sat down to supper, Jesus got a bowl of water and a towel. He was their leader, but he knelt and washed their dusty, smelly feet. Peter didn't think that was right, but Jesus said, if I don't mind doing the nasty jobs, you mustn't either. I want you to take real care of one another the way that I take care of you. Sometimes that means doing things that no one likes to do. It was supper time. Jesus and his friends sat down to eat. Dear God, we pray for people serving others, for all medical staff and hospital workers who go to work knowing the risks that they face for medical researchers seeking ways to prevent and to cure, for social workers protecting the vulnerable, for care workers providing contact and support to those who have no other help, for teachers who are keeping children connected to their education, for farmers, delivery and shop workers keeping the nation provisioned, for cleaners fighting the spread of infection. We hold them dear in our hearts at this time. In your name, Amen. The Last Supper. Then Jesus picked up some bread and broke it. He gave it to his friends. 
He picked up a cup of wine and thanked God for it. He poured it out and shared it. My body is like this bread. It will break, Jesus told them. The cup of wine is like my blood. It will pour out. But this is how God will rescue the whole world. My life will break and God's broken world will mend. My heart will tear apart and your heart will heal. Just as the Passover lamb died, so now I will die instead of you. My blood will wash away all of your sins and you'll be clean on the inside in your heart. So whenever you eat and drink, remember, Jesus said, I've rescued you. Jesus knew it was nearly time for him to leave the world and to go back to God. I won't be with you long, he said. You are going to be very sad, but God's helper will come. And then you'll be filled up with a forever happiness that won't ever leave. So don't be afraid. You are my friends and I love you. Then they sang their favourite song and walked up to their favourite place, an olive garden. Dear Heavenly Father, we pray to you today to give thanks for our family and friends. During these very unusual and uncertain times, it is with great thanks that we can still come together to support, care for and love each other, just as you taught us. We are learning to treasure those closest to us, whilst also supporting others within the community. We ask that you watch over us all, lead us into hope and blessing, and we trust that you will protect and hold us close when times are hard. Lord, help us to continue to be able to come together and look after one another. Amen. Garden of Gethsemane. Jesus had eaten his final meal with his disciples. He had warned them of dreadful times ahead. They wound their way down the steep track into the valley just outside the city walls and then slowly through the dark moonlit trees of the Mount of Olives. When they reached a place they all knew, Jesus whispered to his friends, Peter, James and John, come with me. The rest of you remain here. One of Jesus' disciples, however, was not with them all. Judas had left the supper to meet some of the temple guard in a courtyard in Jerusalem. They gathered a large crowd with clubs and swords, ready to follow Judas wherever he led them. They were determined to find Jesus and take him prisoner that night. 
Their captain gave the order to move stealthily through the streets, keeping out of sight in the shadows. I'll lead you to the place where Jesus likes to go to be quiet and alone when he's in the city, whispered Judas. You'll know which one is Jesus. He will be the one I greet with a kiss. Their plans laid, the soldiers filed out of the courtyard and marched quietly into the darkness. In the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus knew he needed to pray. He explained to Peter, James and John that their job was to pray for him and keep watch. Moving a little into the garden, Jesus knelt in the shadows and began to pour out his heart to God. Abba, Father, dear Father. After a while, Jesus got up and went quietly back to the three disciples who had become overwhelmed with tiredness and were sound asleep. He shook them gently. Friends, couldn't you watch with me for just one hour? They were deeply ashamed of letting Jesus down in his hour of need. But as Jesus left them once more to pray, they again fell asleep. Father, let this cup pass from me. Jesus was now face down on the ground, pleading once more with his Father in heaven to save him from the suffering he knew awaited. Yet this time he prayed, he found himself adding, But not my will, but your will, Father, your will be done. Jesus went to where he had left his disciples. Wake up! The time has come, he said. See, my betrayer is here. At that moment, Judas pushed through the branches and into the clearing. Going straight up to Jesus, he kissed him. Teacher, he said. Oh, Judas. Jesus looked at him, love and profound sadness filling his eyes. Would you betray your master with a kiss? The soldiers seized Jesus violently and hurriedly marched him off into the night. Some people did not like Jesus talking about God. They sent soldiers to take him away. The soldiers put Jesus on a cross and stood it up in the ground. A long time went by and it hurt Jesus a lot being on the cross. The soldiers stood on guard. Many people came to see what was going on. Jesus talked to God. Father, he said, forgive these people for doing this to me. They do not know what they are doing. And then Jesus died. It seemed like the end of everything, but God had other plans. In a few days time, something would happen. Something amazing and fantastic and wonderful. And Jesus would be alive again forever. Christians believe that Jesus died on that cross so that all of us can be forgiven for the things that we have done wrong. Christians also believe that anyone who asks God for forgiveness has the chance of a new start. Let us pray. Dear Lord, thank you that as we think of your sacrifice at Easter time, you made it possible for us to be forgiven for all the things that we do wrong. We're sorry for all the times that we do things our own way and do not ask you for your guidance. We're sorry for the times that we're selfish and do not think of others. We're sorry that when we are in need of help, we do not always turn to you first. Thank you that you understand that we are imperfect and will make mistakes. Thank you that you came to show us your love and your forgiveness. Thank you for taking all of our sins, past, present and future to the cross so that we can be forgiven and be made new each day through your sacrifice and your unending love. Help us to remember that your love, your grace and your mercy is free to us all each and every day. In Jesus' name, Amen. The Resurrection Jesus' friends were sad. They would never see their best friend again. How could this happen? Wasn't Jesus the rescuer? The King that God had promised? It wasn't supposed to end like this. Yes, but whoever said anything about the end? Just before sunrise on the third day, God sent an earthquake and an angel from heaven. When the guards saw the angel, they fell down with fright. 
the angel rolled the huge stone away, sat on top of it and waited. At the first glimmer of dawn, Mary Magdalene and other women headed to the tomb to wash Jesus' body. The early morning sun slanted through the ancient olive trees, drops of dew glittering on leaves and grasses, little tears everywhere. The friends walked quietly along the hilly path through the olive groves until they reached the tomb and immediately noticed something odd. It was wide open. They peered through the opening into the dark tomb. But wait, Jesus' body was gone. And something else, a shining man was there with clothes made from lightning. Don't be scared, the angel said, but they couldn't help it. They screamed anyway. The angel asked them, what are you doing here? This is a tomb and tombs are for dead people. The women couldn't speak. Jesus isn't dead anymore, he said. He's alive again. And their hearts leapt and the angel laughed with such gladness that they felt for a moment as if they had woken from a nightmare. Hello. Normally for our Easter assembly, we'd be all together, wouldn't we? We'd be able to share in the story, not just what we can hear, but what we can see and taste and smell and touch. So this year, we're all going to have to use our imaginations, aren't we, to get into the Easter story. And I'm going to use these things that are on the table in front of me to help us to do that. Firstly, I've got some bread. On the night before he died, Jesus had dinner with his friends and he broke the bread and he shared it among them. And he said, this is my body. And when you eat bread, remember how my body was broken for you. Maybe this Easter, whenever we have bread, we can remember all that Jesus did for us, even though we can't be together. After Jesus had finished his supper, he and his friends went out into the garden of Gethsemane. In gardens, as well as plants and flowers and grass, we know that we also have stones. Next time you're in your garden, maybe pick up a stone and feel how hard it is. And remember Jesus in the garden, thinking about how hard the days to come would be and praying to God to help him. As you think about the things that are hard in your life right now, pray to God to help you. The next day after being arrested, Jesus, as we know, was nailed to a tree. He was crucified for us so that he who had never done anything wrong paid the price for all of the things that we know we have done wrong. And because of him, we have forgiveness. God never remembers the things that we do wrong and he always forgives us. But that day on the cross was a really sad day. So we have here a bowl of salt water. Salt water tastes really horrible, but it tastes like tears like the tears of Jesus' mother and his friends who were gathered around the cross that day when he died. Some people who were there gave Jesus some vinegar on a stick, on a sponge to drink. Next time you have a salt and vinegar crisp and you taste how bitter it is, remember the bitterness of all that Jesus went through. When Jesus had died, his friends took him down from the cross and they wrapped him in bandages and they laid him in the tomb because it was the day of preparation for the Passover and they weren't allowed to do any work that day. But they got ready with the nice smelling spices, just like this scented candle that I have here that I'm gonna light to remind us that Jesus' body was prepared with things that smelt really lovely to prepare for his funeral. And so we waited. 
And so the world waited as Jesus laid in the tomb. The final thing I have is this chocolate egg. I wonder what's inside. Until we open it, we just won't know, will we? And so on that first Easter day, when Jesus' friends came to the tomb and they opened it, they found that it was empty. They were surprised and delighted because Jesus had risen from the dead. Something that they never expected to happen had happened. And they rejoiced. And they found that there was new hope and a new life. Jesus rose to new life out of the tomb. He's alive. When he died, it seemed like everything had gone wrong for his friends. But God had other plans. Something amazing had happened. Even if we've done things that are wrong, or even if we think that life is really hard and things will never get better, God has other plans. Yo 
Sing for all that you've done for me. 